Hey, what's going on, guys? It's Mark with Limo Marketer, and I'm joined here by Michael Garris from Blue Sky Black Limo Service out of Tampa. Thanks for joining me today, Michael. Thank you, Mark. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, yeah, totally. So Michael, Michael's been a client now for, I think, a little over six months, and he's just had really incredible success. And so I thought it would be valuable to have him on and just kind of hear from him, you know, kind of how he started in the industry and then really what he did to have the kind of growth he's had, because I think you're at four vehicles already, right? Yes, correct. Wow. Okay. So yeah, take us back. So I know you did, I think Uber premiere or something before you were in the limo industry, but what were you doing before that? So basically I was working, I'm from Asia. And I was working in a transportation and tourism and hospitality company. Okay. It's one of the biggest companies in the Middle East from Morocco all the way to Emirates. And I was working with the Italian tour operator. I speak four languages, Arabic, okay. Italian, English, and a little Spanish too. Wow. <laughs> so four languages. I bought also all of that in my company too. I used to work in an Italian tour operator, the biggest one in Italy. So okay. I worked with them for almost uh, 10 years. So my background came from transportations and uh, hospitality, hotels, reservations, flights, how we can handle all those 20,000 clients a week. And Wait, also- so, so you said you were, and sorry, I, I missed this a little bit. You said you're in the hospitality industry beforehand and you worked in Italy, you said, for 10 years? In Italy and in Egypt, both. For, for like, was any of this like chauffeur transportation or it was just? It was travel agencies. Oh, operate. okay. Travel agency. Okay. Okay. Cool. Operators. And they have each company. They have more than 20,000 vehicles, not only one or two, 20,000 vehicles in their fleet. So we speak about big companies and I get all my experience and how they do from them. Working from Italian people, working from people from everywhere in the Middle East and Deutsch, German people and British people from everywhere in the country, everywhere in the world. So, and I get this experience from them, how they handle transportation company, how they have their own system, uh, how they make reservations, how they handle the flights, how they handle the problems, delayed, uh, maintenance, scheduling, all that stuff. Uh, Wow. What a great, like, that's like the best prior thing you could possibly do to like what you're doing now. And did you work in operations or or sales, right? I work in both. Wow. Operations and sales for Italian people for sure. And also for operations, how we can handle all those fleets with the flights and all those clients. We speak about 20,000 clients a week. Whoa. Everybody takes around two to 3,000 clients to handle them every week. From their booking in Italy until they leave Egypt. Wow. Okay. What great experience. And I'm sure just doing that for 10 years probably taught you a ton about how to treat clients, right? And and that's, yeah. So talk about that. Absolutely. This came from how, how you treat your clients, how you have a system in the company, and how your, the structure of your company, how is it supposed to be? It's true that the uh, limousine company it's not, are not big as those big companies, but at least you have to have their system. And one day you will arrive to, to be a big company like those companies. You have to follow the system. What system they have? They have system in bookings. They have, they have system in advertisement. They have system to follow up. They have the system for the clients, how you give them quality, service, following up, reviews you have to treat each client as a special for you like i always say even to my employees i have three drivers and tell them first time when a client book you treat it as an interview for you when you go and they apply interview he will keep working with you he will accept you on the job or not if you succeed in the first time with the client this client for sure is going to be back and he will be repeating I have almost, I would say, 50% of my clients are repeating clients, and they call me all the time. So 
we have, in order to arrive to this level, you have to give them quality, something special. Yes, I agree. To treat them right way. The customers, they can find any company, but once they have to stick with you, how you look to your company, why is this company special to give them my job, to give them my business? Yes. From, friends, from big groups, from individuals, from airports, from weddings, from all kinds of trips, you have to treat them special. Listen to your client. If he calls you, tell you my birthday, my daughter's birthday, I want to book a book SUV. Okay, great. Surprise your client by a balloons in their car. Surprise a client with something special from you in order to come back and you build this relationship with your client. Sure, he's called your client, but sure also that you have nice relationship so he can come back to your business again. Wow. So I love what you said. Like, there's so much great info there. So you said to treat each client kind of like you're on your first interview, because in essence, it really is, right? It's their first time interacting with your business. And, you know, if you want those clients back, that first impression is really crucial. And so that that's, <laughs> I can see why you've done so well, because that's exactly what you should be doing. I mean, I, I hear a lot of, you know, operators I speak with and a lot in the industry, they, they kind of talk about comparing to Uber, but that shouldn't even really be in the client's mind, right? If they're really getting, you know, the level of service that you're providing, that really shouldn't even be a thought, right? Because Uber isn't, you know, going above and beyond like this. So you said, for instance, if you, you say a client needs an SUV for a night out for his daughter's birthday or whatever, you come and bring balloons. That's a fantastic idea. It doesn't cost much, right? But it's very thoughtful. Do you have anything else, any other examples of kind of how you kind of go above and beyond to really try to solidify that relationship from when you first meet them? Absolutely. Let's have another example. Wedding. You receive a call. I have a wedding. And they need SUV. They need a body bus. Why you don't give them like roses, for example, with your card on it? It's oh. meaningful. You have to think about how you go to hotel, you booked a hotel, for example, and how they treat you in a hotel five stars as a Meridian uh, or Grand Hyatt, GW Marriott. How they treat you when you say, I have my university today, I have a birthday today. They surprise you with a bottle of champagne in, their, in your room. You have to do that also for your client. And this came from my background in hospitality and tourism and hotels. They were treating their client in their way. So that's why they come back again. And this from my experience, for sure. I feel like you should be shooting the videos, not me. <laughs> 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 like, wow. I can just tell you're probably incredibly knowledgeable as far as, yeah, really how to treat clients. And I love what you said. And I've said that before on a past video, like call, you know, give a call to the Four Seasons, right? Listen to how they talk, listen to what they say, how they answer the phone, how they treat their guests. If you, you know, want to charge a premium or, or more importantly, just keep that client. That's what they're looking for, that five-star experience. And so, you know, there's going to probably be a lot of newer operators watching this. And I think that's great advice. Just call a, Fort, you know, call a Ritz or JW Marriott or whatever it might be and kind of hear how they speak to their, you know, potential clients or whatever. Do you have any other like tips as far as like hospitality is concerned, what you learned in that industry? I know it's a ton, but just as it has to pertain to trying to, you know, impress your, your new clientele, because that's the only way to make money, as you know, in this business is to get people coming back, right? Absolutely. So today it was... With the competitions, a lot of companies are around. And to, tomorrow, for sure, it's going to be more companies. Yes. Uh, Google ads are expensive. We all know Google ads are expensive. Yes. So we have to arrive to a point where Google ads are not only the income or only source of leads you have. No, you have Google ads, for sure, advertise, get more clients. You have word of mouth. You have a good repeating clients. Plus, you have affiliation. You have yes. Affiliation. Work with them. 
send them letters. Like I sent to a lot of companies in New York, in Texas, in California. Hey, I'm Blue Sky. This I my everything in, in the list, my prices, my documents, everything. I would like to make a contract with you. Send me your, your business. I want your business. This is how we do, making connections with other companies, making connections with affiliate in Tampa and the outside of Tampa. And uh, make good relationship with clients in order to get them back and or to word of mouth from them. I got a, a, a lot of calls, just organic calls from repeating clients that, oh, my neighbor recommended you. Oh, yeah. my co-worker told me about you and I would like to get experience. Good example for hospitality at the airport. Airport client, they arrived after five, six hours, 10 flight hours. You have to make to accommodate him the right way. He's yes. already worried about his flight. Day before, shoot him a message. Hey, I'm Blue Sky. I'm confirming your reservation. This is your phone number. This is our brand, our driver name. And tell him where he's going, where, he, where he's meeting you. So yes. this that you accommodate the client before the meeting. Once he arrives, it's easy for him. Make it yes. easy. Help him with the luggage. Meet him. Accommodate him, have a couple of water with you in the car. Have like hourly, get something, champagne, for example, if they ask you champagne when you're talking with them on the phone. Oh, I like to drink a champagne. Okay, so provide them a bottle of champagne when they arrive, even at the airport, if they like to do that. All of that count. All of that, it's called service, quality, follow up with your clients, make them feel special, and you will arrive to this point. I started with one vehicle. And now we have four vehicles in six months, seven months. We have another one might also, you know, coming soon to a sprinter coming soon. So yes. you have to get all those qualified on order to, to have all these vehicles always working. You have to have all this structure. And it's not going to come for one day. It's going to come from, you have to be patient, believe in what you are doing, trust in what you are doing. You have to have a plan goals and structure in your company so you have to have technology use the technology of today use crm like you always say use crm like go high level help yes you can customize it however you like it helps a lot I do like so many times the crm also save you time to save you time to pull up with crime yes if you don't have this system you can pull up again with the client that they want to make booking with you you have, in order to close any deal, you might close it from the first day. But also you have to follow up at least from two to three times to close the deal. Yeah, have totally. To you have to follow up to get those clients, treat every client as special. You have to put all of that in your company, use your technology of today, use whatever you have in order to, to arrive to your goal. And you, you can. Nobody is better than anybody. We all are the same. You can, but just to have a goal and instruction. Yeah, so much great advice there. So yeah, and, and just making sure everyone heard that. So he mentioned, you know, have a CRM because the truth is if you want to manually do the follow-up with every single potential client who you might quote who doesn't book, it just takes far too long. And the truth is most companies aren't going to do it anyways. So having a CRM, our clients use high level. It's a really great one. It's a great uh, CRM that you can really modify for any type of business, but we've really set it up for, you know, the limo industry and follow-ups in the limo industry. And then I also liked what you said about affiliate work and not relying solely on Google ads. And that's a big mistake I see with a lot of our new clients. They come in and they think Google ads are going to give them enough or even Google plus Bing will give them enough business um, to, to, to grow on. And the truth is that it just doesn't really happen or you just won't grow as quickly as you could. Right? So with the Google ads, you should be getting repeat clients from that. If you're treating them right, right. You should be getting referrals even from those, those leads you confer and then affiliates, that's a whole nother story. Right. And that should be, especially when you're starting out a good portion of your business, because you need to keep your vehicles busy. Right. And so you can't just rely on, on Google ads because 
it's very expensive, right? And it some weeks are better than others. And that's just how it goes. And so you really need to be looking in other areas. And so I know we kind of jumped ahead here, but would love to find out. So you moved over here to the US how, how long ago? Like 17 years ago now. Uh, how many? Sorry. 14 years. Oh, okay. Okay. And then when you moved over here, did you go to driving because you were doing Uber for a while, right? Or were you in another hospitality type position or, or have you been doing Uber most of that time? I know they probably haven't even been around for 14 years, probably around there. Yeah. So I started first uh, to work in, uh, in a hospital in New York city. Okay. I city for 19 years before I moved down here to Tampa. So I, I used to work in a hospital and I get also experience from there too. Imagine how big hospitals like that they use a system in their hospitals, connections, uh, emails, uh, email campaigns, uh, email SMS. So you get also all this experience how in the United States the system is working. Yeah. Did you, I'm sorry, did you say a hospital or, or hostel? Uh, hospitals. Hosp okay. All right. I, I thought so. So 10 years at a hospital. And so what did you learn there? You said uh, just about systems, because any big hospital, they've probably got dozens of, of systems for different operations, right? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So you also know how those hospitals, they have all this system in their company. So uh, I work over there for four or five years in a hospital in New York. And hospital comes from hospitality. Hospitality comes from clients, clients come from service. So it's all about connected to each other, all about clients, service, and quality. And they get also experience from there. And later yeah. on, I started to do Uber. I started with UberX in New York City for five years. And mm -hmm. then when I moved down here to Tampa, I bought an XL, and then after XL, one black SUV. And to be honest, that black SUV that I bought it, everything in my life changed after that in 2020 really what, when you bought the black suv because you could just do bigger bigger jobs essentially with uber right and and it pays more with the xl yeah exactly but with black car service i start to have clients i start to have repeating clients and from there started the story so we started with this one having those repeating clients, word of mouth, just slowly until one, my best of mine, he advised you, oh, Michael, why you don't do limo marketer? It's very good, you know, and they will help you with, with the work. And I started working also with you, you know, and yeah. To you, uh, you that was in September. I I'm sorry to interrupt. Was that, I think that was, yeah, August or September. And, and by the way, we're in March, 2024 now. So yeah, about six, seven months ago. Exactly, six, seven months ago. And my best friend they told me, go with you, Mark. That will help you a lot because I'm doing it and it's, it's working great. Yes. So thank you, Mark. Thank you. Because, you know, without you in the beginning, I would not have Blue Sky today. Uh, you helped me a lot in the beginning. Like uh, I learned from you a lot, from your videos, from your business, uh, how we do with the business. Yeah, sometimes we have those stuff. But anyway, in general, I learned from you a lot. Like I suggest any company, especially in the start. If you want to, st to start a company, you have to start it in your way because your way is the best way to start it, to get more clients, to get Google ads. In, and then slow, slowly, you will get all those clients from the ads and word of mouth plus affiliation. You will get used to that. And then we buy a second vehicle, the third vehicle, the fourth vehicle. When did you start? And I agree, it's a great component. And... I think the mistake a lot of people make, like I was saying earlier, is they just start doing the Google ads and they're like, this is all I, all I need, right? And if that's all they do, it's, it's not enough in the beginning. It just isn't. It's too expensive, too competitive. But when did you start? Because you probably already had at that point clients you had gotten that were using you personally from Uber or whatever. So you probably had a few of those. When did you start going out? and contacting affiliates. How'd you learn to do all that? Because I didn't teach you how to do that. I know I mentioned it on videos, but I didn't show you, oh, send letters to them or, or you know. So how did you learn to do all that? So once I arrived to serve the vehicle, 
And my wife, she's helping me a lot. So she does for, for us all the technical stuff, like from CRM, from website, she built her website. So she has a big experience and she's helping me a ton of it. Thanks to her to arrive to this point too. So she was doing that part of uh, following up with the companies and, te and technology, let's say, CRM, yep. plus I, was, I said, okay, now I can't drive anymore because I have a lot of clients and they're missing calls. I have to stay at home. I follow only with the clients, with their reservations and take the calls and I let somebody else work. Because let's say you have a trip that costs a hundred dollars. If you have one call, it can cost you three, four thousand dollars. If you yeah, it. no, totally. Yes. And it did happen to me so many times. That's why I take the decision to stay home and only reservation. And I have my drivers, they do the, all the trips. So one day I received a, a call from a physician in New York. They said, oh, Michael, I have this client pick up today at 7, 8 p.m. I told them, okay. He sent me the email, confirm I did with them the right. And then I sent them back another email by saying to them, hey, I would like to make a contract with you. Yeah. I did the first contract with them. And from there, it started. So I started to- It got you thinking, them. right? You're like, wait a second, why am I- because you get one of those, right? And now you could get a dozen, two dozen or more clients, right? By getting one client, it gets you a ton of clients. Yes, it's crazy because you start like from one, okay, now you know how it's working. It's just to go and contact them. Yeah. Did they oh, just find you on Google or, or do you remember? Yes, I think they found me in Google for my reviews. I got uh, almost 120 reviews in four, five months. Five wow. Months. You've done a great job at that, at asking every single customer, right, for a review. It's so important to build that online reputation. And and yeah, I don't think you have one bad review, right? I mean, they're all five-star. And yeah. that's crucial. A lot of people get caught up in, well, this person's screwing me over or or they're like pissed off. And look, you might be completely in the right and this person might be completely wrong. At the end of the day, it really doesn't matter because... The people that go on and read your reviews, they won't know either way, right? They don't know who's in the right, who's in the wrong. All they know is someone was unsatisfied. So whatever it takes, I mean, do you have any stories of clients that maybe you were late or not you were late, but you know, one of your drivers might've been a little late or just something came up because things come up, right? And you had to take care of that client. Absolutely. One time happened, but I have also, before I say what happened about late, you don't, you can show up to the client late. The Deutsch people, Swiss people, they say you have to be before your appointment, five minutes before. So yeah. you have to show up before the client and make sure enough time. Even on time is late, essentially. If you're right on time, then you're late, technically, right? <laughs> Yeah, so you have to be on time. If he rely in your service, you have to be on time. They can't be late in their airport trips. They lose their flight. So yes. one time, it was a client. She complained right away. She texted me. She was mad about the service. So I called her right away. Like, I read the message. I called her, follow up with her. What happened? What's wrong? First time I hear that. What, what's going on? It, the reason that I understand from the client, the vehicle, it, it was not the same as I quoted here. Oh, I see. Let's see what, what happened then. So I go to see what's happening. I, I saw that that day it was raining here in Tampa. The flight was delayed. Poor driver, he had a tire. Uh, ah. So we had to have another vehicle to accommodate here or cancel the reservation. And by the way, I have that also my cancellation policy too. I have a, I can cancel the service anytime. So I told her, I'm sorry, this is what happened. But let's have in this job the mentality of resolving problems, and you have to resolve it fast. Yes. Don't think about it. You have to resolve it. You have to resolve the client. You have to satisfy the client right away. I took to her in the phone, and I took over, and the problem was resolved. She's happy. She contacted me again, and she left another. Google review, five stops, Google reviews on how you handle it, the situation. It's true in this business, you will have a lot of problems, but how you can handle it, these problems to be positive to you. I have one another Google review from a client. She booked last minute, the flight was late. 
And she said, Michael, I want to cancel the service. I canceled the service for her right away. I sent for her the refund right away. She was happy, even though she didn't use my service. She got happy, she left a Google review that the big company is, have qualities inside the company. This is what I want to continue and to provide everybody, even if they don't use their service, but you have to provide it. Wow. So that that's that's incredible how you approach that. And it's so funny because, and you probably found this as well, there's no happier client. Like if a client has a great time or and they're very satisfied with your service, that's a happy client, right? They'll leave a five-star review. But in the happiest client is someone who actually starts out and they weren't happy, right? But then you handle it correctly like you did. You call them as soon as possible, right? Because from the moment they they send you the, the bad message or whatever, the longer it takes, the more annoyed and angry they get, right? So you handled it right away and you took care of that client probably above and beyond what most people expect. Because whenever things like this happen, people always have, it's like kind of an unset expectation of, what they think would be fair. And you always want to not just meet that expectation, you want to exceed it. And so the no, <laughs> it's so brilliant, the no cancellation. So that's obviously going to cost you some money, right? Having that policy. However, it's an investment in your future marketing. And a lot of operators, I feel they look at it the wrong way because they look at it like, well, that's not fair, right? It's not fair. And look, maybe it isn't fair, but I can tell you this. If you go on Yelp right now and you look at local limo companies, you're going to see, read all the bad reviews and anyone watching this video, go and read bad reviews of limo companies. See what people say. And a lot of the people are going to say something similar. It will be maybe something about cancellation fees, or it'll be something about maybe they got the wrong vehicle and the company didn't take care of them well enough and still charge them, you know, well, I, I got you the ride or whatever. Oh, I gave you $20 off or whatever. And it's just not enough. So you're going to take a hit probably maybe a few times a month financially, but you're going to get, well, what Michael has, he's only been in business for so what, six, seven months now, and he's got 120 five-star reviews. People are giving him five-star reviews that didn't even use the service, right? That's wild. And, and that right there, because a lot of people, before they book with you, and we've been finding this more and more at Limo Marketer, not only having the really good five-star reviews, that is important, but we actually like including the best reviews, on the landing page and the best reviews bar none are reviews of a story of someone where something went wrong and let's say it's blue sky's fault but they went above and beyond and took care of that client if anyone reads that review you can charge 10 20 percent more and most people will still book with you because they see that this is a company that Things are going to go wrong. It's inevitable. We're dealing with vehicles. They break down. Drivers call in sick. Things happen, right? But if you're showcasing, hey, this is how we take care of our clients or even people that aren't our clients, right? That cancel and you just refund them. This is how we take care of people when something goes wrong. And I'm telling you, that's what people want to see. That's what people want to book with. And that's what's going to make your client acquisition cost much lower. It's going to increase your conversion rate on your landing pages, meaning more people, more of the people who click on your ads will actually call or request a quote. And it will also increase your lead to sale conversion rate. Meaning if you're getting a hundred leads, someone like Michael might be converting 35, 40%, maybe even more just because of his stellar online reputation. And so what that does is over time, let's say your average client acquisition cost, if you're spending three grand a month on marketing, let's say, and let's say you get 30 clients a month, well, that's costing you a hundred dollars 
per client you get, right? But with a stellar online reputation like you have and handling the clients the right way, um, your lead costs might go down and you know the number of people that book after you quote them will go up and that might drop to $70, $60, maybe even less. And so really, while you might be losing little bits of money here and here from having that, you know, cancel at any time policy that probably a lot of limo companies will watch this and think, oh, Michael's crazy. What, what's he doing? No, he's not crazy. He's doing something right. And I, I predict you're going to be a million dollar company in, in no time because everything you've told me is exactly what any of you watching this that want to grow a limo business should be doing because wow, you've really got the hospitality thing and you understand the type of business that we're in, right? It's not a transportation, it's an experience business, right? And that's why people pay a premium. That's why they don't just do an Uber, right? And so I'll get off my soapbox because I've been preaching for a while, but this is exciting stuff. So what are your, so you've got four vehicles now, what, what's the fleet makeup look like right now? And then you mentioned you're getting two more. Yeah, so basically now we have four full-size black SUVs, and now we're thinking about uh, Sprinter van. And basically, nice. I'm not all, I'm not the one who's gonna buy it. I have one of my friends who want to invest it in it because he sees that our company is working. And this guy, I know him from 20 years, and he was working also with me in hospitality, and he's in the United States. So I told him, Michael, I see everything you're doing doing correct way. So. Why I don't invest in your company too? So he told me, it's okay, let's invest and buy this vehicle so we can put it in your company. So look at it, you don't have to be only by yourself. You need to talk to other people, another business owners, and take from them their experience. Doesn't have to be in transportation, has to be in any business. Yeah. And how did you start it? How we handle that? How we do that? They share your experience and from there you will learn. You, from there, you know how it works. From there, you know the law, how I can do that correctly by the law. All of that stuff, it matters to build and even getting bigger your company. So yeah. when they see you serious, is your company serious? People, they come and they book with you. If people, they showcase and are really story in Google reviews and they are happy, even if they did not use your service or they did or something happened in between, you know how to handle them. Treat each client special. Yeah. Treat each client with quality. People missing hospitality. After yes. COVID, they're missing hospitality. Uber doesn't provide them that. This is what this client is missing today. I can take Uber. I can take any other company. Why I have to go with Blue Sky? Because, yeah. they, provide you, because they provide hospitality. What you are missing, they give it to you. With not crazy price. With yeah. Not with a normal price that everybody or most of people who are looking for our service, they can afford it. So they are happy and they come back. So follow that and you will you'll get it. You, you are right for sure. I'm very sure. Yeah. And it sounds like, so essentially the business you're in, it's really, it's a people business, right? And the scale requires good people. So how did you find, because you said you have three drivers now. And so how you found them, how you've trained them. I know you mentioned in the beginning of the interview, how you say, Hey, here's the framework. When you're meeting a client for the first time, you're on an interview. Like, can you give any tips on finding good drivers and kind of what you're doing to pretty much duplicate yourself in a way, make them think and see the client like you do yeah, what are what are what are the secrets with that? <laughs> uh, it's, it's not secret. You have to treat your driver as one family member. He's working with you. He's not working for you. So you have in order to to choose the right candidates for your position, you have to find the quality and which is the best one to fit for you. Yeah. From everything we talk about from. The language, from how they dress, from how they talk, the body language, all of that matters. And you yeah. choose the right people for the right business. And you start, once you hire them, after one trip, second trip, always follow the client. Listen to what the client said about them. Uh, so, yeah. hey, how is Brian today? How is Mike today? How is John today? Is he good? How about the service? How about your driver? If you see 
but good reputations, okay, he's the right candidate. And also when you treat them as not only, are only employees, no, they are not working for you. They are working with you to grow up your company. So yes. if you have, they have this idea, they have the idea that they are family members, they are investing with you, they are helping you to become yeah. bigger. Yes. They also give everything they want in order to accommodate the client because they get also incentive. And by doing that, you have to motivate them. Incentive. Yeah. If I get a good Google review, I'll give you extra cash. If I get yeah. this back, I will give you an extra cash. If they want the time off with their family accommodated, even if I have to go and to drive, if they have something happen in their family, you have to accommodate them. So it's not only about work, about business, but it's also about family too. You're bringing in, in your life, yes. your family, and from there, you will grow all together. Because they're taking care of you by taking care of your clients, right? So you're taking care of them and then incentivizing them. I just want to point this out. Everyone should be doing this, incentivizing by leaving, you know, if they take someone and they leave a stellar review, incentivize them with some cash, right? Reward them for that because, I mean, that's that's so valuable and they're really the person with the face-to-face, -face, they're the ones who represent your company. Now, did you meet these other drivers? I'm guessing maybe some of them waiting in an airport parking lot, other Uber drivers that you're like, this person, I like how they handle themselves, how they present themselves. They've got good potential. Yes. Or... Uh, mostly they were uh, Uber drivers that also, I, I used to work with them already. Uh, like we were standing all together in the airport. I know them already for years, one, two, one or two, three years. So I know them personally too. So uh, they knew where I was and now where I'm at right now. And they look at you and they believe, okay, he did that and he's doing better. So for sure he's doing the right thing. So let's let's get him. Let's enjoy him to get that totally. because they don't want to miss also the opportunity. Yeah. Plus they're learning from you, right? Because that's that's a lot of times what employees don't it's not always about just the paycheck, right? It's also about, are they going to grow? Are they going to learn things? Are they going to get better themselves? Because long-term that can be more valuable than what you're paid is what you learn because you for the past, you know, 20 years, it's not like you're an overnight success because you've got like, you've been building all of your skill sets, right? In the past 20 years. And so now you start a business, everyone's like, well, Michael, how do you take off like this? It's like, well, because he's already learned all these different things. And it's almost like, is it, this is your first business, right? Yes, my first personal business, yes. And so, yeah, most, most with their first business, they don't like take off like this. And which isn't to discourage others who maybe don't have, you know, a lot of experience in hospitality or whatever, but yeah, everything he's saying here, if you treat your clients really well and your employees like their family, that's how you're going to grow and grow quickly and get repeat clients because online advertising is too expensive if you're not getting repeat clients from it. It's just not worth it. Absolutely, absolutely. Another point also about the clients. The clients right now, they don't see me. Everything I do only the booking over the phone and they don't see me at all. So who represents your company is the driver. So you have to take care of the driver. I got a Google reviews, even if I didn't see the clients, they speak good about me, how I handled them right away, how I was good in communication. So you have to have good communication with the clients right away. Uh, yeah. all, all, all of that, all of that, if you put all of that in your company, all the structures, the mindset, the time, patient, believe, trust in yourself for sure, for sure. Everybody will succeed for sure. Yeah. So, and I'm curious on that note, typically, what are you doing? Are you typically sending a text quote out? Are you, are you calling them or does it, are you asking them, would you prefer I call or text you or what, what have you found works best for you at this point? So first I always send the message text or call. I have also trust the client to choose, but you have to give them little time frame. Like once you receive the lead, 
this this client maybe he asked also another two companies or already chatting with another company or yeah. already with somebody else. So leave them a little bit, like one two minutes, just to not test the water of the client. He wants to you right away. He needs your service right away, or he's talking to somebody else. And then you start to open the conversation text. Okay, yeah. from I text to a client and we talk about their service, what they want, asking questions, asking questions. You have to have an idea, a picture of what the client wants. And from there, you will know how to make the sale. You have to find the key to get in to get the client. Okay. So you're going to find it from questions. Yeah. Those questions. Once you ask the questions, you will make the sale. You have the idea. Yeah, I wow, completely agree. So can you give me an example of like what sort of questions you're asking to these clients? And, and you mean you're asking them via, well, obviously if they call you, you ask them on the phone and that's a little easier to kind of probably get more information when you're on the phone with them, right? But if you're just texting back and forth, what are some examples of you know questions you ask? Uh, I, would, I would say the best option to make a sale make a booking right away to call the client. But yeah. also you have to respect his privacy too if he tells you text. That's why you have to wait. So you have like kind of questions. You have to ask if they have vehicle preferences, if uh, they have uh, special accommodation like baby car seats, when they see there are four or five people, they are coming from the airport, ask them, oh, do you need baby seat? Do you need the car seat? So you know that they are family, they are big family. Uh, you ask them, do you want round trip or one way? You yes. have to see if this lead that you're receiving is that from, from Tampa or from outside of Tampa. You have to see that because if outside, he can be just here for vacation. Yes. In this case, you have also strategy for selling, strategy to quote people. And the people who live here, you have another strategy to quote them and open with them questions so you can accommodate them and have them repeating. Uh, from there, you you have to under, you have to have an idea. You have to ask the question: How many people? Uh, what kind of vehicles you want? If they have ever used the car service before, uh, round trip or one way, their flight, what flight they're using? If they want uh, uh, meet and greet at the airport, uh, yeah. If they are senior citizen, ask them if they are senior citizen or not. All that, all those questions make. Easy the sales. Makes yeah. Easy. If you say, are you a senior citizen? Okay, great. I have a discount for your senior citizen. Yeah. yeah. There you make a selling because people they like they love to hear discounts. Yeah, totally. Discount, even the same price. Discount, you're gonna make the, the sales right away. Yeah. Don't this is the service, this is what you have. Don't negotiate with your client. This is the service that I provide with the price. If he likes you, you have to have the charisma. You have yeah. to to them in order to sell. Some people they make the booking right away, easy. And some people they don't make the sales right away. So in this case, you have to follow up with them one day later, three days, five yeah. days to close the sales. If they come back, here we go. We made the sales. If they don't, they don't. They have their reasons. Probably it's, it's expensive. Probably they don't afford it. Probably something happened in their life. You have also to understand that too. Like we don't, we go to all the stores, but we don't buy from all the stores. Yeah. Have this mindset also to accept it. Yeah. And yeah, I love that with the questions because the questions you ask also indicate, you know, how knowledgeable you are and how well you can accommodate their needs by just asking the right questions like, oh, are you a, you know, senior citizen? Oh, because we offer this or really just finding out, and this is probably more so if you're on the phone with them, but if they're flying in, if you're picking them up from Tampa and you find out it's a family, well, maybe they're on vacation, right? And maybe you can even potentially, you know, once they use you, maybe you get a round trip, who knows, maybe they need you during their vacation, but just by asking those questions, a lot of other operators don't, right? They don't ask, oh, do you need car seats? And actually it's funny because I just recently, you know, we have a one and a half year old and I realized, cause I always like to use my clients. It's so much more convenient when you fly somewhere 
if the car service provider has car seats, because what we had to do, um, and I probably won't do this again, but we actually had to bring a car seat with us. And that's just so much more of a hassle. Regarding the meet and greets, how do you typically handle that? Do you typically include that? Is that an upcharge? Do you have any advice as far as that's concerned or, or what's working for you, I should say? Because it I does mean, take more time. Absolutely, it does take more time. And sometimes you get charged also more for parking too at the airport. So it costs you money too. Oh, yes. Uh, so you have to look at it again, service. Don't look at how much you are making. Look at how the service, because you pay today Google Ads, tomorrow you want to save in Google Ads. So you have to get those repeating clients. In order to have those repeating clients provide the service. So for me, for example, meet and greet, how I handle it. All big companies that I used to work with them in Italy and in Egypt, they have meet and greet, regardless. Nobody can pick up from curbside. It's not an Uber. What is the difference? You have to go wait for the client. You have to wait for the client. The client doesn't have the client doesn't have to wait for you. You have to wait for them. So once they come, it's in. They were ready for you. You have to sign with their name. You have uh, uh, to accommodate them with the luggage, help with them with the luggage, and include it in the price. You don't have to charge a ton of money. The parking cost five dollars. Okay, include five dollars. Yeah. You lost one time five dollars because more than more than one hour. It's okay, but how many times didn't pay for the parking and you provide for the service? Yeah, so it has to be included in the airport. Yeah, so such great advice there. And here's where I think you differ from most operators and how they look at things. So most probably look at the whole meet and greet thing. They're like, it's going to take my driver extra time. It costs me extra. I should be charging for that. But what they're not calculating is Google ads. Really, if all you get is one ride every time you book a job, you might as well not even do it. You're going to lose money, right? However, if you start getting you know, half the clients, like you said, use you again because of the exceptional service you offer and you just include it with everyone, which by the way, I think everyone watching this, if you can do meet and greets, just include it because someone just got off a plane after flying five hours. The last thing they want to do is go try to find where the curbside pickup is. And I've actually done this before. And it's just, you know, it's just one thing. It's so nice when you get to the bottom of the escalator and there's someone there with your name on it. It just feels so much different. Hey, Mr. Mr. Petrie, can I help you with your bags? I'm going to take care of you. We've got some cold waters in the car. It's just such a different, ex it's night and day and Uber cannot, or I believe they don't offer that. And, and really, I, I don't think they can. And so that sets you apart in a huge way right there. So every time you can offer meet and greet, yes, is it going to cost a little bit more? Yes, it will. But look at it as an investment because a much higher percentage of your clients will come back just because of how well you treated them. If they're local and you did that for them, I guarantee you, especially if you somehow, you know, have some sort of maybe follow up because you want to make sure they don't forget about you. And so I guess that would be one other question. Have you considered doing, or are you doing anything now? I, I had a client in who reminds me a lot of you because he was just very sharp and really understood service. What he would do is he would get a luggage tag with their name on it and their, their address, and it would have his, you know, branding and his phone number. And he would, I believe, ask if, if, hey, would you like this, you know, free luggage tag? And it looks really good. Do you have anything you're doing right now to just as, ensure you stay top of mind with, so, with the locals? Absolutely, absolutely. So in our company, first of all, the following gap was clients all during, before and after the reservation. We're doing, we always, all our drivers, they have their name tag with the name of the company on their suit. We provide also for our clients then baggage, luggage tag 
with the name of, with the name of our company, so they can put nice that with, see with the name of our company free advertisement. It's just, just small things you can do. <laughs> yeah, that that right there. So anyone watching this, if you're not doing the luggage tag thing, it is such a no brainer, especially if they if they have a really good experience, they're gonna say yes every time to the luggage tag because then they're gonna be like. Actually, that's a great idea because now next time I go to the airport and I think about I need a car service. Who was that guy? Oh yeah, I've got I've got his number on my luggage tag. Fast forward a year after hundreds and hundreds of rides, you're just gonna start getting that repeat business over and over again. And that's the only way really to make online advertising profitable is when you get that repeat business. And so Wow, that's that's incredible. So what are your plans from from here? You said did you say you're thinking about getting a sprinter? Yes. Or okay. Uh, back to your point with, with the clients. So uh, I was saying also about the the following up with clients in order to come back. Like you have to make email and SMS campaigns every while. So every yes. while for the clients, they don't forget about you after one month, two months. Here, blue sky black limb service. How are you today? Don't yes. you forget about me. I'm, I'm still here, you know, if you need any service. All that stuff help you to get more clients, help you to get a repeating clients. And your car leaves a business card. Every client is going to take your business card with the water. He goes to the plane. Hey, when you come back to Tampa, here is the card of this company. I use it and they agree. And I get clients from there too, from, from the flight. You know, they call me Michael, one of, my, one of your clients, they left me their, your business card. Oh yeah. Okay. Who's the client? Yes. Okay. I have to discount for you because I, I repaid. Wow. Yeah. That, that's brilliant. So finding out, and it's funny you mentioned this because that's something we start doing with an automation and high level is detecting if their number, and obviously it's better to just ask them, find out, are they local? Like if you're taking them to the airport, there's probably a higher chance they're local. If they're flying in, they might not be, but look at that area code of the phone number, right? Is it a local area code? And obviously a lot of people from New York moved to Tampa. They don't always change their phone number. So you really want to be finding out. But if you can start tagging in your CRM, every client who's local, just create a tag that says local tag them. And then you can create email SMS follow-up campaigns, which you might say, well, Mark, that's, I don't want to annoy people. Look, if you make the impression that Michael's making with your clients, they're not going to mind hearing from you. As long as you're not sending them a text every week, you know, you're just checking in to see, hey, you know, it's been a while since we, we've we talked. And you can even filter in your CRM by the tag, by how long it's been since you've contacted them, right? Hey, this is Michael with Blue Sky. I mean, even better if you remember a little something about them. That's if you really want to blow their socks off, if you can get a little piece of info about them that you can customize in the SMS. And you might say, well, Mark, how can I, you know, send that to a hundred different people? No, it, it is possible in CRMs. If you find out something specifically about them, you can add that as a dynamic field in the message. Little things like this make a huge difference. And really just sending them a text with, you know, you saying their name, most people don't, aren't even aware that this is all possible with SMS automation, a lot of times they think a lot of these texts are you actually sending them. And the way to really make it seem less automated is the more custom fields you have in there that say their name, hey, you used us last on and then you fill in the date, right? Oh, we took you, you insert the destination, we took you here, right? Um, so yeah, love that, definitely luggage tags, using that CRM. And so yeah, plans for growth, from here, are you gonna stay black car? Do you think you're ever gonna get into bigger buses or stretch limos or party buses? What What are you planning? Uh, maybe, yes, maybe in the future, for sure. We are building our fleets right now with great drivers, with great new vehicles, all of them 2023. Most likely after the Sprinter, we start to look at the stretch limos, like SUVs. And from there, we start to build our fleet. Uh, I started with one, who knows? Probably after two, three years, I have all those vehicles. I have uh, my Lamborghini. Yeah. <laughs> nice. I like that. Well, Michael, I won't take up any more of your time. Wow. I could talk to you forever because you're so knowledgeable about this. It's still crazy to me. You've only been in business less than a year. 
and you you've done so well. So, Hey, thank you again, Michael, so much for taking your time to educate. And I hope all of you watching this, man, I learned so much. I'm sure a lot of you learned a lot. So thank you so much for doing this, Michael. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Mark. Thank you for inviting me in. And thank you for uh, all the help that you did for, uh, for us. We are really appreciate it. Without you, we couldn't make it. Thank all you, right. Mark. You're welcome.